How everybody doing today? Good. Oh. Coach, in the past few games, uh, Anthony Nelson, he's done really well, not only right. getting sacks, but creating turnovers, getting strip sacks. What do you make of his play and like just his improvement the past few games? Well, with, with uh, Nelly, he's been a steady Eddie since the first time he walked through the door. But the thing is to see him stepping up, especially when we had some injuries and been very shorthanded. And him and Joe in a couple of games played every snap. So, one, I take my hat off to him for that. And, two, he, this guy works hard, comes to work every day. And it's when we always say sacks come in bunches. But for the last couple of weeks to have major sack fumbles and really big play, game-changing plays, I'm just impressed to see him have the sex, success after all the work that he puts in. See, you just you just said it. You know, you've told us all year the sacks and the turnovers come in bunches. Bunches. Now they're coming in bunches. Is there any rhyme or reason for why now? No, because you you were not, hadn't changed anything in practice, hadn't done anything. You do. They just it's just the way it happens. So this is my twentieth year in this league, and you see it every time. Sometimes you don't have sacks. Next thing you know, you got twelve in two games. You don't have turnover. It always happens like that. So we just kind of keep it, hopefully keep it going. How impactful was Vita Bea's presence back out on the field? I know stopping the run was, was paramount for you guys and, and right. held them well under 100 rushing yards. Well, going into that game, they just rushed for 320 against Detroit, so we knew that we had to take care of the run game, and Vita is, is a huge part of what we do. And the first time we played, we didn't have Akeem. The first time we played them, having Akeem and Vita there together, along with the other guys, and it was a true commitment. We knew the game plan. If we don't let them run, we would help our chances of winning, and that was the way we approached it. Having Hicks and Bea in there, do you guys do anything schematically different this time around as opposed to what you guys did? I'm sure not every play call was the same, but I mean, just. 80% of the game, game plan was the one we had before we just executed better. We just executed better than before we were committed to run the game, but you know, misfit, somebody get out of a gap, and we gave up a 60 yard run, a 27. We knew we had to eliminate explosive plays on the ground. Coach, speaking of uh, players that have improved in recent weeks, I think Will Golson is a guy that has really stood out on tape and improved, creating turnovers, making tackles in the backfield. Right. What have you seen from him? and his improvement over the last couple of weeks? Well, since I walked in, Will is the one nobody really writes a lot of articles about. I had Sue, I had Vea, I had Akeem. Nobody really talks about Will, but Will, two years ago, led our team in quarterback hits. He's been steady Eddie since he walked through the door. He just comes to work every day, does everything you ask for him. And the tough part about him is we've been playing so much nickel or 11 personnel that he comes out because we got Akeem and Vita, so he don't get to play as much as the other guy. Never says a word, just whatever you need me go do it and it's just uh credit to him to see him getting making the plays when his opportunity presents itself you talked about how many moves you've spent in this game yeah how how difficult was it to watch um that collision on monday night football with, with lamar hamlin well first of all i'm just so happy that they say he's making improvement but as a coach been been around this game for a while you know you one is just so many emotions, the highs and lows that come up with it. Or as a coach, especially being a position coach, you're just happy to see after every play that your players stand up and able to walk off the field and we'll fix everything else. It was uh, it just brought everything back into reality. You know, it, deep down in this league, it's a big boy business. We're judged by wins and losses, but this incident shown that it's bigger, it's bigger than wins and losses. It's, human life was at stake. We've asked you about Logan before, and I know his opportunities have been limited just, just schematically as much as anything, right? He's got some really good players in front of him, but what do you think he's going to be, um, and, and, and what, what have you liked that he has done this year already that when he walks away as a rookie, you say, okay, he got this, this kind of The worst thing he did the other night, you see him miss that sack the other day? Yeah, so he missed the sack. He should have had the sack the other night. But the thing that I took my hat off and when we talked to one of our player review of the game, I think he played 21 snaps and he played the run outstanding, which was when I was looking at it, that would be my concern. I like, well, do I put Logan in or do I put Akeem in? Yeah, that's no. Do I put Vita in? But when the plays he were in against a running team that was hard-headed about running, he did a bang-bang job. So I had to brag on him about that. And to really answer your question, Logan can be as good as he wants to be. I've been fortunate here in this league, different places. I've been to coach a lot of good players that went, and he's talent-wise, he's right along with them. He can really be as good as he wants to be. So can you take us behind the scenes a little bit on what happens on game day, right? Because you're a <coughs> defensive coordinator, right? With Larry, you're doing the front, uh, right. you know, front seven. He's doing the back.
back seven, and, and I'm sure you're you're responsible for personnel groupings, right? right. Todd's calling the defense. Right. How does that work between the three of you in the heat of the moment? You got 20 seconds to you know get your guys in, get the play call, and all that. Who's doing what? And I know you've done it for a whole season right. now, so you can kind of speak to that. Right? right. From the way we've done it, the plan is kind of set as we go in throughout the week. We know the run game. These are the fronts we want to be in versus this personnel. Coverage-wise, these what we want to be on this down and this. So it's pretty much set, and it really Todd has a feel for but we really have a script that if anything happens, this is the script we're going to follow. You know, third and three, we're going to be in this if they're in 11. First and 10, midfield, we're going to be in this. If they're in the red zone, we're going to be in this. So and we're, but we're pretty much all on the same page. We know this is what we're going to be in and what we're going to do. So it's really a smooth operation. So he makes the play call, and then you're getting your personnel in. Right. We know what personnel in, and we go and we go from there. Everybody substitute, and we go accordingly. There's a lot of talk about trying to potentially rest guys in this game later in the game. And right. It seems like outside linebacker, obviously, the position where you might kind of have been doing that since uh, Joe and Really no, they've been rolling. Yes. Uh, of your three practice squad outside linebackers of Snowden and Odenebo and, and Rashid, who, who's kind of shown you the most if you were to elevate one? Uh, as we look at all of them, to me, all those guys about the same because they really had limited work. You just, just watching them doing the show team and stuff, and they all flash the same, very similar abilities. But as of right now, I don't know that one stands out above the other. Because there's been this discussion all week, should the starters play, should they only play a little bit, um, but, you know, on defense, especially the defensive line, there's naturally a rotation right. anyway. Uh, right. So going into this game, do you look at it as an opportunity for maybe some of the guys like Logan that don't always get the lion's share of the reps, the, the highest amount of snaps? Maybe this is a good opportunity to get them some more reps because they're going to be in the game anyway. It's just even more of an opportunity to, you know, get some live action and right. not it's not going to affect the, the playoffs either. Right. I see that more of a preseason speculation that that's the way you'd play, but the way we're proceeding with this game, we're normal reps, and our normal guys playing the normal deal. If there's a rotation comes around, if your number's up, you go. But right now, there's from our standpoint, I haven't seen anything that say play him more, play him less. That has not been the way we're pr approaching this game. Hey, uh, Coach, Atlanta poses a great test for you as they have had over 2,500 Rushing yards on the I saw that. Oof. What do you want to see out of your front seven personnel and stopping not only the run game, but the, getting a consistent pass rush as well? Well, the thing about them, the run game puts you on the heels for your pass rush because everybody's bracing to stop the run. Then all of a sudden you got to react to the pass, so that's going to naturally hurt you. And then the team last week and this team, they give you a lot of problems because they run on third down, third and seven. But the team last week, third and seven, they ran the ball. And we were in a pass rush, and luckily we got them. But I'm just saying it's that, that problem will be here this week. Last week's team was hard-headed about running the ball. This team is hard-headed about running the ball, and this team has a little bit more quarterback run element to it, so that poses another problem. I think they're averaging like four, almost five yards a carry, which poses another problem. So we got some issues to deal with here Sunday at one. When you look at the Falcons draft this year, three of those draft picks figure prominently on their offense, right? right. They have Algier, who's got right. 900 yards, right. Drake London, London. Who's their top receiver, and then right. the quarterback Ritter. What have you seen on film from all three of those guys? You know, Ritter's more recent to the lineup, right. but London, Algier, and well, when you, when you see the package schematically, what they're doing, they're using, they're utilizing their people. You know, they're they're a running team, which opened up the play action, and London is getting open, and he they're force feeding him the ball you know, as I would, because he's a playmaker. Then Algiers, he's doing a great job running the ball, breaking a lot of tackles. I didn't realize the first time we, that this guy breaks a lot of tackles. He is really hard to get down. And then Ritter, they're bringing him along slowly, but at week and week, they're giving him more and more, so you can see kind of what they're doing going forward. But they're implementing all three in their offense. Is it a challenge to coach this week? I mean, in terms of getting your guys, hey, I know you guys know it doesn't matter in terms of where our playoffs are. Right. But is it a challenge to say, man, we're going after this. We want to win our ninth game. 
You know what? I, we talked this morning, and it's really not a challenge. And we talking as the, the challenge would have been if we were sitting here needing to win and needing to get help. That would have been the challenge. So this week, nice no, that, that was a nice problem to have. So this, and we just talked. Matter of fact, we just talked about that when we left the field. So right now, no, that's not a challenge because one, we know we're in, but now you want to go in with some momentum, and then there's some things we need to get cleaned up because whoever you play in can play. So you got to be make sure you're ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys later.